Now your rare legal project management is largely about fixed prices or alternate fee arrangements. So we have to understand how do we create that budget. When you look at it, the budget comes from clarity in two things. What is the deliverables we're creating? Just consider the IP agreement that you may be creating. You might be doing a will or a testimony. Whatever the deliverable is, the output, we have to be very clear on what we're actually giving. Once we understand that, we can then work out what are the steps, what are the tasks required to create those deliverables. This in project management terms is called the work breakdown structure. And when we have the work breakdown structures, we, we can then estimate how many hours of effort is required in each task. In fact, we have to determine things like the internal human resources, meaning the hours that our legal matter team is involved, and we can break that up into rates. Of course, a senior lawyer compared to a lawyer to a paralegal, we can have rates of which we just divide those or multiply those by the hours of commitment from each team member for each task. We can also look at external HR, which may be, be professional witnesses that are involved up front in debriefs through to getting external counsel. We may have other fees such as court fees and we might have also things like equipment, materials and consumables. Now when we add all those up, we've got our direct cost. But of course we've got to cover the cost of the law firm as well. We call those indirect costs. And often that is covered by just adding a certain percentage that is agreed by the partners, such as 10%. And you might find they'll call that 10% administration. That covers basically the indirect costs of running the business, otherwise known as overheads. Now add those two together, we've got the project cost. And of course, we don't want to work for free. So we add a margin on top of that. Now when we add all that up, you actually get a set fee, which is the budget that the client gets. Now this is important because if you look at previously when we were just coming up with a rate for a lawyer per hour, we would have included all those things in it, the direct costs, the indirect overhead component and the profit margin. So really, this is just breaking it down. But we could keep it at that high level and all we're then doing is multiplying it by the hours required of that legal professional against the task required of the legal matter. Add all that up, we now have the budget but we have to be able to have those work breakdown st structure steps that will allow us to be able to track the project because this is where we can lose profit. We have to be able to deliver the project in accordance with that budget, which means we're going to follow through the work breakdown structure. Of course, you might be asking, what happens about the unknown unknowns? Well, we often cater the, for those through what we call reserves or through variations. So if we're very clear on the scope and then suddenly some factor requires us to go on a side tangent and add more scope, therefore that becomes a variation. So we just say to the client, well if you want to add that or we want to change that, that actually is a change or variation as we call it. And therefore putting in the change, we have a different cost, maybe a different schedule, etc. So we can actually increase the fees on that front. But if there is some high risk that we need to tell the client, well, if this happens, if this condition comes real, we will have to go and do that, that might include a completely different inclusion to the budget. We call that a reserve. So it's basically saying up front to the client, if it goes to court, you better have a reserve or about this amount. That means that it's not part of our budget at this point in time because it's not part of our scope. But if this condition happens, we then have to make sure the client has got an amount in reserve that we can tap into. That means the client feels that they've got control over their cost and what basically the additional cost that they may need to require. This allows them to make an informed decision whether pursuing this legal matter is something important or taking on those legal services. It's all about transparency, but what's most important for the law firm is we're keeping profit. So if we're not working out the budget in the most appropriate way, or we're missing items, that becomes a problem. Over time, we'll have a number of work breakdown structures, so if we go to do another IP agreement, we already have the steps written out so we don't miss anything. In fact, we can take the lessons learned from the last time we do it and therefore add to the work breakdown structure so we've got some really good templates in the law firm for the types of projects we do. Then when you start with that template, you determine what other differences or what extended time may be required or resources you may need for that particular legal matter and, that, and we use that as the basis to add and build on our previous experience. Budgeting is fairly easy, but we have to get the experience to get it right and then deliver to that budget.